Heavy snow is falling, the wind is howling, and the blizzard is raging on up here in the northern Great Lakes. I'll turn the sound down. This is footage out of Marquette, Michigan, and you can see the wind just blowing the snow. We're seeing gusts into the 50s, and travel has just ground to a halt in some of these areas. You do not need to be out on the roads unless you have to, absolutely have to be somewhere. This is just a mess up here. I'll show you one more. This is a webcam view from a church here in uh, Nobinwood. Way. I think I'm saying that right, Michigan, and you can see it is just really, the snow is just flying here. Boy, look at that. That is whiteout conditions. We're seeing snowfall rates in some areas over an inch and a half per hour. It is coming down, it's piling up, and folks in and around the northern Great Lakes are really, really seeing a big time winter event unfold. This is translating into the northeast where we'll see ice accumulating with power outages, very, very cold temperatures, wind chills well below zero for much of this area up here through the morning and again tonight and for much of the day actually. But uh, can you pick out the blizzard here? Look at this big time comma head here with uh, deformed band back through Marquette, the UP of Michigan, Wisconsin, Northern Michigan, you're getting in on it. And then uh, high clouds, very thick cloud cover up in the Northeast where freezing rain, sleet, and some snow is falling. But this is going to be predominantly an ice storm up here in this area. Here's your front kind of circling back through this area and uh, down in the east and the south. It is moving toward the east, bringing some gusty winds with it. This whole entire area across the north, basically the northern quadrant of the country is going to be gusty today with uh, strong winds out of the northwest behind this front. Dry conditions too. We've got red flag warnings. If you take a look at our alerts map, blizzard warnings continue from central Iowa all the way up uh, into the UP of Michigan. Blizzard warnings there, winter storm warnings in between, covering much of Wisconsin here, uh, just north of Madison and over here in Michigan too. High wind warnings, wind advisors up for much of the east and central east central portion of the nation. And of course, in the northeast, winter storm warnings and ice storm warnings. If we zoom in here, we can actually take a look. Look at Montpelier here, most of Vermont, uh, just west of Lancaster, looking at ice storm warnings for accumulations of up to a half an inch, maybe even seven-tenths of an inch of ice in some of these spots. This is going to be very, very rough here in the Adirondacks, looking at picking up some ice as well, maybe a tenth to two-tenths of an inch, and some lighter ice amounts outside of this. We've got winter storm warnings up toward northern Maine, winter weather advisories for much of the rest of the area with a few winter storm warnings uh, posted as well, Syracuse, Utica, and uh, Oswego, looking at winter storm warnings for snow, sleet, and freezing rain today. Boy, Boy, oh boy, it is a plethora of wintry weather up here in the Northeast. Not much else going on around the nation, as you can see. That is where the main action is. Here's the radar. Look at all of this is snow. All of this down here is rain. So we've got that front moving through. It'll be showery weather. We had some tornadoes yesterday and some gusty winds, some severe wind reports. Not a very good day. This is a very dynamic system, as I said. And look, if we zoom in here, we can actually see some of this. Let me center it up so we can see it. But uh, you can hover over this around Marquette, getting seven tenths of an inch per hour snowfall rate. Some of these bands contain snowfall rates over an inch per hour. Uh, as we go into Sault Ste. Marie, looking at basically a quarter of an inch per hour, so it's lighter as well in some spots, but in northern Michigan, picking up close to an inch per hour rates and down toward Green Bay, over an inch per hour. You guys are seeing whiteout conditions there with blowing snow all over the place, and then rain and snow. This isn't doing a good job picking up mixed precipitation on this particular radar image, but we're seeing light snow and freezing rain in some of the areas up here in New England, and that is going to be a big time problem. We've seen snowfall rates and snowfall accumulations very, very heavy in some spots. This is just preliminary data here, so don't get married to this. We're going to see a lot higher rates when this, or a lot higher accumulations when all is said and done, as much as two feet or more up here in the UP of Michigan. But look back toward Minneapolis, St. Paul, some of these reports, five to six inches, a little bit more than it looked like it was going to be yesterday. But uh, this storm is very, very strong and wound up. You get into that deformed band, you get some of these, here, let's change the display. There we go. Yeah, you get some of these really intense rays. They put down that snowfall really, really quickly, looking at, um, 
up here in northern Wisconsin, looking at as much as 12 inches just east of Mercer, Wisconsin, Wisconsin. So we'll continue to see the reports come in and see all of these amounts just pick up and pick up and pick up. And I'll have a better display for you tomorrow once all of the data is in. But according to the NAM and some of the other data, that is uh, model data that is uh, coming in, looking at another foot and a half, potentially in parts the UP of Michigan up here, probably not going to see 24 to 36 more inches in this area. I think that's a little bit overdone here, but still uh, another foot to go up here in the northern parts of Michigan in the UP of Michigan. And then over into the Lee of the Lakes, we're going to see the winds kick around and those lake effect snows are going to set up and you'll see that snow banding and certainly have the um, some of those snow belt areas are going to get under those snow bands. And of course, you're going to see those rates pile or those accumulations pile up very, very quickly. Even some snow down here in the Appalachians in West Virginia, a little northwesterly snow event going on in North Carolina. You could see a couple of spots pick up an inch or two down here in the highest peaks, but uh, really the action is up here in the northeast and we'll get over let's go back to this display for a second so that's fine let's go on to our weather bell display look at this the nam is printing out as much as a half an inch some of the other models like the hr bring this up to near seven tenths of an inch up here in vermont so or in new hampshire rather vermont new hampshire maine definitely on the hook for an ice storm back in the Adirondacks as well. So watch out up here. Make sure that you're prepared to lose power and tree limbs coming down and all that's going to be a skating rink on some of these roads. It's going to be very, very, very cold at the surface as well. Sleet's not as much of a problem, but could see half an inch of sleet in spots. And that is your winter storm update boy what a day what a big storm system this is and you can see here on the actual surface map look at this thing it's 976 millibar low that is a very very strong system i don't care who you are my friends look at these tightly packed isobars snow wrapping around on deform band we get these very very strong lift heavy snow rates on the backside and strong gusty winds all through the Mississippi Valley, the Northern Plains, uh, well, not so much the Northern Plains, the Midwest, and then eventually back in the Southeast. Watch this, as we put this on into motion, going to see that uh, freezing rain take shape over the Northeast, and then cold air is going to rush in as cold air advection sets up. Temperature regime this week is gonna be a lot different than it was last week where lots of folks in the 80s, those 80s are being squashed, and we're seeing a lot of that Arctic air spill into the United States. We go on out through the evening tonight. We'll see the big time snows wind down and leave us with lake effect snow. Much of the rest of the nation under high pressure control and we're not looking at a lot of precipitation till we get later in the week except for some clippers. Here comes a clipper Tuesday, <coughs> excuse me, Tuesday afternoon and into the overnight hours that will be heading south through the Ohio Valley into the mid-Atlantic and another clipper hot on its heels stretching from North Dakota into Minnesota and back through the Ohio Valley again. Hey, Gen T, look at that. Ohio with a little bit of clipper action. Yeah, it's not going to be a blizzard or anything, but it's going to be cold and you're going to see some snowflakes in the air. So that is a win in my book. Here I am in North Carolina, high and dry. And as we get on then toward Wednesday night into Thursday, the subtropical jet, we've been talking about the subtropical jet kicking into gear and certainly it will be doing so bring a lot of moisture back into the southwest and eventually the west, and that will translate to the east, and we'll see what happens when cold air and moisture meet up in the east, if we can get that to happen in the first week of January or so. So we'll watch these systems as they come into play. Another clipper coming in as we head into overnight hours Thursday, and then by Friday, looking at a little bit of snow up here potentially in New England, here comes that first system translating east does not look like there's enough cold air to work with so it's going to be a little wet where we need the rain here in the southeast but not quite enough cold air high pressure coming in but it's very very weak 1023 that's not going to get the job done here in the southeast and this will just slide off the coast but more energy coming in so we're going to have to watch all of this as we head into january and toward peak climo there is some model divergence on how the long range pattern will develop. I've been talking about the long range pattern and you can go back and look at yesterday's video. I did a, a deep dive on it. 
I'll have that linked up here. And uh, certainly, my thoughts haven't changed all that much, but we are going to see a ridge pop out west, a big block over Greenland set up shop that will help to suppress the storm track. The question is how much cold air will be able to be tapped and brought into the pattern. And I think for the northern areas, for the mid-Atlantic and on up into the northeast, I think you probably have a good shot at getting a winter storm over the next couple of weeks, maybe a couple of winter storms for the southeast, maybe in the cross southern tier, it may be just a little bit too early as cold air needs to build back up in Canada after the discharge that's coming behind this blizzard. All right, so we're going to keep watching all of that. GFS continues to want to build a trough out west and a ridge in the east. Most of the rest of the models don't do that. They build a ridge out west, and I'd rather have all the rest of the models on my side, particularly the EPS as opposed to GFS. All right, here's daytime temperatures today. Max temperatures barely kidding above zero here in Minnesota and very, very cold throughout the Great Lakes. Lonely warm spots here in the southeast, the desert southwest, going to be in the 60s and 70s as you get down into Florida tomorrow. The temperature regime is a bit colder here in much of the southeast. We're going to see temperatures into the 40s and 50s, and the very warm temperatures get squashed way down here to the southern part of Florida. Another surge of cool air comes in behind the next clipper. Highs barely, maybe not even making it to zero here in the northern plains and the northern Midwest. You can see where the Arctic boundary is going to set up shop, not getting above freezing across the northern Ohio Valley into the northeast. Very warm across much of the deep south and into the southern plains. Warm air returning there, but that will get squashed back down again. Although the heat builds in Texas, you guys are not feeling any sort of winter right now. Some of you like that, some of you don't. I like it when it's cold and wintry in the winter time, and it's just not happening here for the south right now. But I think the pattern change will take shape. And look at this. By the time we get into Friday, South Texas is getting into the mid-80s. That's ridiculous needs to get cooler than that, kill some of those bugs down there. All right, so there's your Arctic boundary, same regime across much of the week where we see cold air across the northern quadrant of the country, the northeast quadrant, and then uh, the south is a warm and it is going to be potentially getting wetter and wetter. Here are your wind chills. Look at this, minus 30 degrees up here between uh, near Fargo, actually. This is very, very, very cold. You guys have to bundle up. You can get frostbite just like this if you go outside in this kind of cold air mass with these kinds of winds blowing. Not gonna get all that much better through the afternoon today, and as we get into the overnight hours, those wind chills just remain below zero, although it backs off a bit as the storm pulls away, the winds lighten up. Still get a surge of cold air, wind chills down into the 20s all the way through the south, especially as we go on into 1 a.m. Wednesday. You wake up 7 a.m. Wednesday morning. Look at this, just extremely cold wind chills over much of the nation as temperatures back off again, and that will kind of warm up as we go through the week. But we get another Arctic blast with more cold wind chills through the middle and ending portion of the week. So it's going to be very, very cold across the north. That is your takeaway. You're gonna have a nice temperature gradient north to south, cold to, cold to warm as we go through the week. That is the forecast for today. I'm gonna to wrap the show up, take a look at some, you know, what's going on with the sun. We've gotta show you a couple things there and uh, see if there's any earthquakes we need to pay attention to. We're gonna get into that right now and just get you on your way. I just realized I didn't even show you the wind gusts. I wanted to show you some of the winds that's uh, associated with this blizzard. Look at this, 30 miles per hour, 40 miles per hour rather, in Madison, very close to Madison, that report that I clicked on there. But uh, you can go through this site. This is windy.com. You can look at a wind gust, 47, close to 50 miles per hour in northern Illinois, up here towards Chicago and South Bend and near Columbus. We're looking at gusting into the 40s over some of the lakes. Let's click on that. So we have 62 miles per hour, southern Lake Superior, very, very windy, gusting the 20s. I had some wind gusts through this morning and wake me up here in Morganton. So gusting into the 20s and 30s across much of this area this afternoon. So I wanted to show you that. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, by the way, hit the subscribe button down below and join the team. We are over 7,500 subscribers and I really appreciate all the support. Let me know where, you're, uh, where you are, where you're watching from, what kind of weather you're seeing out there. If you're seeing any of these big heavy snow reports, let me know how much you've gotten. Boy, this is something for you all up in the Great Lakes. I'll tell you that. Like the video and share it with friends and family. Let's grow the channel together. And if there's anything I can be in prayer about, please put it in the comment section. Let me know if there's any way I can support you. I'll be happy to do that, read and respond to all those comments. 
far as the ge geological and space weather update, not a lot going on right this minute. We had an M5 solar flare that's not going to hurt us too bad. We've got a coronal hole stream that'll be visiting us. And of course, that always puts us uh, potentially in minor geomagnetic storm conditions, can uh, interfere with radio communications and things like that. But we do have a sunspot that we need to pay attention to. This is growing and gaining a little bit of complexity. 4324 up here. Let's close this out and I can click on it and show you. See here, you've got positive and a magnetic, uh, positive and negative magnetism right next to each other. That is a recipe potentially for solar flaring. So we have to watch this to see as this turns toward uh, center disk, see if we're going to see any solar flares out of that. So I'll keep a watch on it. No big chance of Aurora viewing right now, just a low likelihood. We're not looking at anything going on in that regard. We did have a 6.2 earthquake off the coast of Peru. I don't think there was a lot of damage or anything else as a result of this, but certainly there was a shake there. That's the biggest one in the last 24 hours. Nothing going on here in the United States. That is good news for us. And finally, we are headed up toward a full moon on January the 3rd. We're at 69.2% right now. Waxing gibbous. the next full moon, of course, as I said, is in January. It is January the 3rd, and it will be the wolf moon. The first full moon of every month has a name. It was a cold moon in December. It is a wolf moon in January. And now you know about your moon. And that is the show for today, my friends. I hope it has been enjoyable. I hope you've learned a couple things. And now you know the weather for the week, of course. And I will keep you informed if there are any changes to anything. I will tweet about it or post about it on X. Follow me there at Real Cold Rain. In the meantime, I hope you all have a very, very nice day and a nice start to your work week. Stay safe up in the Northeast, back through the Great Lakes, and uh, take it easy on those roadways. In the meantime, have a great day, and I will be back tomorrow with another video. Take care, everybody, and God bless.